Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss the differences between a glued suit or a fused suit, a full canvas suit, and the in-between the half canvas suit. <laughs> out and buy a suit today, no matter if it's offline or online, chances are you'll encounter these terms often used by salesmen to lure you in to spend more money. Now, a lot of salesmen use these terms interchangeably, and we want to help you to get the most value for your money when you buy a suit. Don't expect the salesman to know what they're talking about. You should know what you get so you don't get cheated. So first of all, why do you need an interlining or a canvas in the first place? Well, basically, fabric is two-dimensional. It's woven, it's flat, and a suit is three-dimensional. So the interlining helps to keep the garment in this three-dimensional shape, so it's flattering to your body. Now, for the interlining, you basically have three options. It starts with glued or fused, half canvas, and full canvas, with full canvas being the best and fused being the cheapest and not-so-good option. So let's start with the cheapest option and work our way up. Fused or glued interlinings are the number one thing in the suit industry today simply because they're inexpensive and you can produce it on a mass scale very easily and cost effectively. So what are the advantages apart from it being cheap? Well, it does the job, it gives the garment a three-dimensional shape. The problems, however, are manifold. First of all, because it is glued, there's not much flexibility in the garment and you can feel it because it feels less comfortable and it doesn't stretch when you move. Usually you do get a chest piece that helps to form that three-dimensional shape that looks very masculine. However, in a garment of that category, you usually get something more inexpensive, such as a cheap cotton or low quality wool blend. My big pet peeve with fused or glued garments is that they're much more insulating and less breathable, which makes me overheat more quickly and sweat. Generally, whenever I touch a fused garment, it feels somewhat limp, and depending on what chest piece it has, it can be stiffer or softer, but overall, it's just a very unexciting feel. With a fused inner lining, you also don't end up with a nice lapel roll. Usually they're quite flat, which looks unexciting, and it's a true hallmark of a cheap glued suit. Because of the inner lining, sometimes it always kind of stands away in an awkward manner, and there's really nothing you can do about it. It just looks off to a trained eye. Moreover, these fused jackets are not made to last because eventually they will come loose and at that point it'll form ugly blisters on your lapel and on the outside and that's when you have to throw the garment away. So when you buy a fused suit, you're part of the throwaway economy because the resources that are used have to be thrown away and so it's also bad for your wallet because even though the initial investment is low, you have to buy it over and over again. If we look at a fused jacket on a graph, it starts out with being quite good, but the day you wear it, it just deteriorates over time. And then at one point in time, when you get the blisters, you can throw it away and it's worthless. Next up, let's talk about the full canvas construction, which is the traditional way a tailor made a suit. First of all, the only disadvantage of this method is that it's quite time consuming and therefore expensive. However, it has many advantages. First of all, the interlining is sewn to the fabric and as such, it's flexible. So when you move, it moves with you, it's comfortable, there are no pressure points. And over time, the garment gets actually better. On top of that, you can really decide what kind of stiffness you're going for. For example, the jacket I'm wearing here right now is extremely soft. It feels more like a sweater and it has some structure when I stand still, but if you see the wrinkles here, they just stay like that. On a traditional suit, Tailors used horsehair because it was very stiff and springy and it would keep the shape even though you'd wrinkle it. For example, compare this. When I touch this, it springs right back in shape as if nothing ever happened. So this is actually a vintage rowing blazer made in England in the 60s. And it's much stiffer and feels like it, but it has this crisp look that you sometimes know from military garments or evening wear, such as tuxedos or tailcoats. However, if I really want to look my best, I go for something crisp and springy because it simply has the most beautiful lines. Also, if you go with a stiffer interlining, it smooths over any kind of bumps or imperfections on your body, so it may be much easier to fit. It takes about an hour per lapel to sew the canvas to the fabric so it stays in shape and looks good. 
Fortunately, it doesn't wear out. And if you look at it on a graph, the handmade jacket gets better as you wear it. And you will never have the issues with blisters and you will wear the fabric out before there's any issue with the canvas. To achieve the lapel roll, you have to take the interlining, the canvas and the fabric, angle it and then sew it. That way it stays in shape and will always go back to that angle. Let's assume this is my fabric and this is my interlining. If I sew them together like this and I move them afterwards, they will always go back in this position. If I start sewing them together like this and I move them back to the middle, they will always spring back. And that's the idea of a lapel. And that's when you get this nice lapel roll that stays in shape. The lapel roll is a hallmark of a handmade jacket or suit. To cut costs, the German company Strobel came up with a machine that enabled to sew the lapels while they're angled. At first, it had to be operated by hand, but it saved a lot of time. Today, they have the KAED machine, which does it fully automatically, and you can do a lapel in one minute. The great thing is, it comes with a left side and a right side, because the lapels on the left and right are angled in a different direction. Good operator can work on two machines at the same time, which means you actually get four lapels in one minute. Throughout an eight hour day, someone could make anywhere from 600 to 1,000 suit lapels, whereas by hand, you can end up just making about six to 10. Obviously, that's a lot more efficient and if you produce quarterly suits on a mass scale, it really makes sense. However, it also has its price. A machine of that caliber costs $100,000. So it's really fun to look at this machine and see the sensors because it's basically like a typewriter and it just recognizes when it's done. So it's very easy for the operator. Now, some people say the quality is not as good as if it's made by hand. And actually we tested it. The jacket I'm wearing here right now has one lapel padded by hand and the other one padded by machine. And there's really no discernible difference. They both roll, they're both quality and the machine-made product can be as good as the hand product in that instance. Now, even if you work with a machine, you have different parts, such as the top part of the jacket and the bottom part. And if you do a full canvas construction, it takes some time. For that reason, the half canvas construction was invented. It basically takes the best of both worlds in the sense that it takes a good chest piece that is sewn and lasts for a while with the cheap part of the glue to keep the cost down. It's called half canvas, but in fact, it's more like a two-third canvas with one-third of a glued inner lining. The only reason to ever go with half canvas versus full canvas is to save on cost. So if you don't want to compromise in terms of quality, you should always opt for the full canvas. However, if you can't afford full canvas, a half canvas garment is much superior to a glued inner lining because it's more breathable, it's more comfortable, you don't overheat, and it lasts longer. Personally, I'd always rather save for a full canvas construction, but that's just my personal opinion and each to his own. At the end of the day, it's important to keep in mind that everything has its purpose, but if you can afford it, up for the full canvas. If not, go for the half canvas. And personally, I'd suggest to always stay clear of the glued canvas, unless there's really no other way for you than to go with a glued interlining. If you want to learn more about suits, please check out our $100 suit versus $1,000 suit video or our $500 versus $5,000 suit video. And you can also learn more about the terminology behind ready to wear, off the rack, made to measure and bespoke in this video here. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and hit that little bell so videos like this come right to your inbox.